Uh, it's uh, my pleasure to introduce Marco Scavino from Universidad de la Republica in Montevideo. And the topic is uh, statistical modeling approach for metallic fatigue. Please, Marco. Uh, so thank you for the presentation. Uh, well, first of all, uh, thank you very much, uh, Raul, uh, for giving me the opportunity uh, to uh, attend uh, uh, the workshop and, be, and being here. And uh, thanks also to all the workshop organizers uh, that, um, for all the support. So um, uh, this talk uh, uh, concerns uh, a statistical approach, so statistical models in order uh, to analyze metallic fatigue data. And uh, the main idea is already in the title, we um, uh, propose to use a famous distribution in fatigue, uh, but that uh, was never used before uh, uh, within uh, these uh, statistical models I will present. Uh, this is a, a joint work uh, with uh, Professor Dale Solan and uh, uh, Raul. And um, so the, the uh, outline of the talk, first uh, to give uh, uh, some motivation um, about uh, fatigue data uh, and uh, uh, through a, um, a, a real data set. Okay. Uh, I will present the main characteristics of these uh, data sets. Then there uh, will be uh, some statistical model we propose to analyze uh, um, the available data, uh, a short uh, part of model comparison. Um, and uh, there is also an, a new proposal uh, regarding uh, uh, the notion of equivalent stress that can be used uh, uh, within uh, this model in order to improve, say, their capability of uh, uh, explanation and prediction. Then another, if uh, time allows, uh, experimental data sets conclusion. So um, uh, the results presented in this talk are based uh, upon a very uh, recent uh, work with uh, um, Zaid and Raoul. Uh, however, uh, this work truly has uh, um, its roots in a previous work um, that uh, we uh, made uh, years ago uh, with uh, the late professor Ivo Babushka also and uh, Barna Zabo. And uh, it, this uh, has been a well-received work also because uh, we uh, consistently uh, introduce um, uh, Bayesian uh, uh, techniques in order to analyze data. However, today I will uh, uh, use only a classical approach. And um, so, uh, uh, on March uh, 2016, uh, thanks to Raul, I had the opportunity to attend uh, the conference at ISIS Advanced in Mathematics of Finite Elements, uh, honoring the 19th birthday of Professor Babushka, who is uh, uh, here uh, together with Raul and Said when uh, they also then visited him in August uh, uh, 2016. And uh, this visit, uh, the participation to the conference, uh, prompted also um, another work uh, with um, uh, late Professor Babushka and uh, Barna Zabo, um, uh, which was also based on uh, uh, finite elements. <laughs> okay. And um, so you may access this uh, photo from the uh, web page of the uh, Stochastic Numeric Groups at CAUS. And um, okay, so um, what is uh, met metal fatigue? Metal fatigue uh, um, concerns, uh, uh, say, these uh, um, uh, cyclic loadings uh, that uh, are applied uh, to, um, say, metal uh, specimens uh, in order uh, to analyze uh, uh, their uh, durability. And um, uh, as you will see, uh, we uh, obtain from these fatigue experiments uh, what um, is usually called stress life SN data. And um, uh, so our goal in general is to be able to predict the fatigue life of uh, materials. 
uh, through a systematic statistical approach that involves uh, model calibration, uh, model selection, and uh, so model ranking. Um, uh, recently, there has been uh, a, a new prompt uh, from the statistics sites uh, in order to uh, analyze uh, this uh, kind of uh, data. And um, it is, uh, I mean, I shared uh, these uh, opinions from uh, Professor William Meeker, uh, Pablo Escobar, Francis Pasqual, and uh, their team, uh, that uh, usually certain standards and uh, handbooks uh, do not uh, describe, do not use uh, modern statistical uh, methods. Uh, so um, nowadays, um, it is needed to use uh, nonlinear regression models and uh, uh, properly handle the so-called runouts or uh, uh, right sensor observation that they occur uh, when the experiment uh, uh, ends without uh, uh, observing the failure of the of the specimen. And um, so it is. Uh, I mean, uh, statistician hopes that uh, uh, improved statistical inference method uh, may be introduced even in the engineering standards. Um, okay, so uh, let's start with uh, practical data. These are data available uh, from um, uh, fatigue tests uh, that were uh, performed at the Battelle Memorial Institute uh, in the 50s. And uh, at the end, we have 85 um, uh, experiments on uh, aluminum sheet uh, alloys, uh, 75 S P six. Okay, and there is a reference uh, in the uh, original uh, um, report uh, to the uh, testing machine. This is exactly the testing machine. You may see uh, here this uh, black, uh, uh, specimen. This is the specimen uh, uh, located into the machine that were be submitted to to stress. Okay, and um, th this is uh, perhaps even more uh, even more clear uh, where the specimen, how the specimen is located, um, and uh, the rigid lips that uh, allow them uh, to um, submit uh, this uh, uh, metal to stress. Uh, so um, the uh, data that are recorded uh, at each uh, experiment are the maximum stress, okay, as max, which is measured in uh, kilopounds per square inch, the test ratio, which is an important quantity, simply de defined as the uh, ratio between the minimum and the maximum stress, uh, the fatigue light, which is the number of uh, uh, load cycle at which the uh, fatigue failure occurred. And then we have also a binary variable to denote whether or not the test has been stopped prior to the observation of the, of the failure. So in this uh, uh, real data set uh, with uh, 85 uh, experiments, um, we um, observed 12, uh, 12 runouts. Okay. And so these are the uh, real uh, data. Uh, you may see the uh, second column contains the uh, maximum stress as max, uh, um, the number of cycles in the third column, the fourth column, the uh, cycle ratio capital R, and the last column uh, denotes if uh, the experiment uh, has been uh, run out or not. Okay, so um, this is the uh, uh, shape that you observed first in black in the uh, true picture uh, for the sheet specimens in these uh, data sets of aluminum alloys. Um, some observation uh, were indeed uh, uh, Delayed from the data set because the failure occurred, but not um, uh, inside, uh, say, the correct section. So if the failure occurred, uh, say, very close to the grip, then it is not considered a failure. Okay. So there has been uh, um, 
say, um, a true understanding of the meaning of the data sets in order to construct uh, these data sets of 85 uh, experiments. And uh, well, uh, so what we did uh, several years ago, first was to reproduce uh, the simple model proposed in one of the handbooks with engineering standards. Uh, so this is uh, uh, the expression that uh, I uh, will uh, use uh, many times to express the, the mean equivalent stress and uh, the equivalent stress, which is the fundamental notion, uh, needs to be introduced uh, because uh, we uh, observed several experiments with a um, different uh, test ratio. So we need to be able to um, uh, compare in a unique uh, formulation uh, some experiments that are so different in nature because of the value of R. And so there appears this uh, other uh, fitting uh, parameter Q. Uh, um, and uh, for instance, uh, in, uh, in this uh, least squared uh, approach, uh, we simply have uh, to minimize this objective function. Um, uh, in order to find the uh, unknown parameters, K1, A2, and 3 which characterize the uh, mean equivalent stress, and Q, which is the new parameter uh, for the expression of the equivalent stress. Okay, so we fit uh, uh, this model uh, to data, we find uh, um, the uh, estimations, and uh, um, in particular, uh, the value of A3, which in the, this uh, uh, literature, it is considered, or it is named, the fatigue limit uh, parameter. Um, okay. Here there is a mention uh, regarding uh, um, the estimated fatigue limit that some authors um, truly consider relevant to have a distinction between the notion of fatigue limit and the fatigue limit parameter A3 in the models. And uh, so uh, they consider the fatigue limit, which corresponds to the value of the maximum stress when the test ratio is in the equal to minus one, the so-called fully reversed uh, condition uh, that I summarized uh, uh, below is occur when the stress alternates symmetrically between uh, equal magnitudes of tension and compression. So we, uh, uh, in these data sets, we have tension-tension uh, uh, experiments when the, the test ratio is greater than zero and the tension-compression experiments when the test ratio uh, is uh, negative. Uh, good. So, um, uh, here is the fit. So uh, I have uh, not been able right, to plot before the data because the data depends on the um, fitting parameter Q. So now we are able to plot the data because we fitted the parameter. Uh, and um, uh, so usually in, in, in uh, statistics, uh, mo most of the time, uh, um, the response variable uh, uh, is uh, uh, on the vertical axis. But uh, in fatigue, it is a tradition to put uh, the number of cycles in the horizontal axis. Okay, so this is the, the typical uh, SN curve uh, that uh, we may obtain. Um, uh, this typical uh, curvature that occurs with uh, SN data. And um, here, uh, there is no distinction yet uh, between the two kinds of experiments when the stress ratio is uh, greater than zero or less uh, than zero. Also in this approach in the handbook engineering standards, uh, the runouts were not considered. So uh, in, um, in uh, 2016, uh, we uh, moved uh, by proposing models that uh, are uh, able to handle uh, the runouts. Um, and um, even today, I will uh, mostly consider the, uh, the so-called fatigue limit models, okay, where there is this uh, A3 parameter, as you will see, always there. Uh, remind the expression for the equivalent stress, which is also 
uh, crucial. And uh, in uh, today's talk, uh, we have a proposal to improve the equivalent uh, stress. Um, okay, so um, here is uh, uh, the first model. So the fatigue light here is modeled uh, using a log normal uh, distribution, which means that uh, the logarithm base 10 of the uh, fatigue life n is a normal distribution with the, the mean equivalent stress, uh, which is uh, um, detailed here. Uh, and uh, in this model, uh, the standard uh, deviation uh, is uh, assumed constant equal to tau. So we have uh, uh, may propose the likelihood for this model uh, with these five parameters given the 85 experiments. So M is equal to 85. We have this uh, uh, expression for the likelihood that uh, considers uh, here the run out data. Is the run out part for the right sense of the data. And um, uh, okay, um, so the um, fit in this case uh, becomes uh, mm. Um We may um, uh, move to this other plot, which is exactly the same as before, uh, but this time uh, we colored the experiments according uh, uh, to uh, the value of the stress ratio uh, R. Okay, so there are values where R is less than zero and other when the R is greater than zero. And roughly we can say that uh, the median quantile, the black uh, curve, in some sense uh, uh, separates these two um, kind of, of experiments. Okay, so um, this is uh, just to emphasize that there are uh, two kinds of loadings in these uh, uh, 85 experiments. And then, uh, so the proposal uh, is uh, to use uh, in some way the Bidbaum Saunders distribution, which is very famous in uh, fatigue, um, um, in order to model the fatigue life. Uh, so briefly, um, uh, I um, here. Uh, wrote the um, cumulative distribution function for the so-called two-parameter uh, Bidbaum Saunders distribution when alpha uh, uh, greater than zero is the shape parameter and beta greater than zero is called the scale parameter. And uh, so when uh, a random variable has uh, this cumulative distribution function, we say that it is uh, distributed like Bidbaum Saunders alpha beta, and its probability density function receives uh, this uh, uh, expression. A few uh, remarks. And uh, uh, this uh, um, probability density function is always uh, unimodal for all values of alpha and beta. And there is uh, uh, this uh, clear connection, uh, you have seen this from the beginning, uh, between uh, a random variable which is uh, Bilbao Saunders distributed and uh, a transformation of the uh, uh, Bilbao Saunders random variable in such a way that it is normally distributed. Um, so um, uh, there has been a lot of interest around uh, this distribution. Uh, there are uh, even books devoted only to the Bilbao Saunders distribution. And uh, surprisingly, uh, no one has applied the distribution uh, with the models that we uh, fitted the time ago, the fatigue limit models. And uh, so we believe that uh, uh, this is a good uh, uh, combination. Um, uh, so um, here I simply uh, recalled um, uh, uh, how Bilbao Saunders uh, at the end of the 60s, they proposed uh, and why. Uh, the, um, the distribution, uh, which is basically um, uh, originates from an approximation uh, of the central limit theorem when we accumulate, uh, when we accumulate um, tracks, uh, uh, extensions at every, uh, say, uh, cycle. Exactly. 
And uh, so uh, here we have uh, the heuristic arguments uh, that uh, show immediately um, why using the central limit theorem and assuming that uh, uh, the cumulative distribution function of the fatigue uh, life T measured in number of cycles received uh, uh, this expression through the normal distribution, then uh, by choosing, uh, as we have seen uh, properly, alpha and beta, uh, we have uh, the uh, Birbaum Saunders distribution. So then uh, many other authors, indeed, uh, they uh, had the, um, say, um, goal in order to justify why to use the Bilbao Sanders uh, distribution in others framework also. Here I depict uh, simply the density, uh, fixing uh, the value of beta varying alpha. So you may have an idea of this uh, uh, distribution. And um, there is another distribution which uh, uh, it is important uh, to us, uh, which is the so-called sun hyperbolic uh, uh, normal distribution. Um, again, um, is, uh, the distribution function of this random variable uh, can be uh, expressed uh, through the um, uh, distribution function of the standard normal distribution, phi. And uh, we may provide, uh, of course, the uh, density of this uh, uh, distribution. And uh, uh, it is important to us also the uh, connection uh, between a random variable, which has the Bilbao Sander distribution alpha beta, and in such a case, the uh, natural logarithm of uh, capital T uh, has a sine hyperbolic normal distribution, alpha log beta 2. Okay, where uh, in this case, um, alpha uh, is uh, the shape parameter, um, the, the parameter in the middle, in this case, log beta is the location parameter, and sigma, which is equal to two in this case, is the scale parameter. So this is uh, um, what people sometimes call the, the log Birbaum Saunders uh, uh, distribution. And here uh, uh, you have uh, uh, the relation between the sun hyperbolic distribution and the standard normal. Uh, distribution. So it is not difficult to generate simulations for this uh, random variable. Okay, uh, so these are the densities for the um, sine hyperbolic uh, normal distribution when sigma is 2, gamma uh, taken to equal to 0, and I varied only alpha to gain some idea. Okay, uh, so um, now, the, the new model, uh, first one, uh, which we called model 2A, uh, is uh, um, when uh, we propose to assume uh, um, that the fatigue life, N, is modeled as uh, a Birbaum Sander distribution, or equivalent, equivalently, the logarithm of N, which we just uh, looked at, as a sin hyperbolic normal uh, distribution. Uh, so, um, using uh, uh, this other uh, distributional assumption, uh, we uh, may write again the, the likelihood. Uh, this time, we do not have the standard deviation. We have the shape parameter alpha. Okay. The, uh, as usual, the uh, part which refers to the runouts. And um, this is so model 2A. Two, two model 3A. Uh, uh, we um, propose uh, uh, to um, use directly the Birbaum sound and distribution by saying that the logarithm base 10 of the fatigue life has uh, a Birbaum sound and distribution. Then the likelihood becomes uh, um, available in this expression. And here there is uh, uh, the um, density of uh, the Birbaum sounders random variable. Okay, so we have uh, already uh, two new models that use in different ways uh, the Bilbao Saunders uh, distribution. Then um, we may fit, uh, we already did this uh, with the um, log normal distribution, model 1A. We may uh, use the other two models that I just uh, introduced, and we may see that uh, according to the value of the maximum log likelihood, um, 
the model uh, 3A uh, is the uh, receives say the best the best performance here. Okay, and um, so you may also be uh, on the point um, estimates for all the parameters included in these uh, models. Uh, okay, and um, here, ah, uh, sorry. Uh, oh, okay, okay, yes, this is already model 3A, uh, um, so we may appreciate uh, the quantized function and uh, uh, all the data. Um, with the, say at, at right now the best uh, the best model, uh, but then uh, we um, uh, generalize the, the three previous model uh, instead uh, of considering uh, a constant standard deviation and uh, constant uh, uh, shape parameter. Uh, we allow them to vary according to the equivalent stress. So uh, so now the model, uh, for instance, the first one based on the uh, log normal distribution. So the equivalent, uh, the mean equivalent stress has the same expression as before. And the, the um, uh, standard deviation of the equivalent stress has now this expression, 10 to power, uh, uh, let's say log linear uh, expression for, uh, that depends on the equivalent stress. Good. Um, so the, the the other two previous models that use in different ways the Gilbaum standard distribution, they are also uh, generalized by allowing non constant shape parameter as a function of the equivalent stress. Okay, so now we have three other models uh, to fit uh, to, to our uh, data. What we observed, even in the case with the uh, log normal distribution, is uh, that um, the uh, quantile. Uh, say zero zero five uh, approaches faster uh, to the um, uh, horizontal asymptote. So this is a, a common uh, behavior. And um, good. So uh, yes, here uh, I plot model uh, one B now with the plot. Uh, also, it is important if you are interested in some parameter in particular. Uh, to get the corresponding profile likelihoods. So, which means that uh, you maximize uh, the likelihood with respect to all parameters, except the one you are uh, interested, normalizing it uh, to the maximum uh, likelihood for all parameters. So you may provide here uh, um, these uh, uh, curves, for instance, here we compare the profile likelihood for the so-called fatigue li limit parameter A3 uh, in, in the two models with uh, the normal distribution. Okay. So you, you may observe how uh, noticeable is the, the shift uh, in, uh, in the mode of the distribution in this case. Not, not much perhaps in the, in the variance, but different, we will see a different behavior uh, for Bilbao Sounders. So here is the um, comparison, the model comparison for the three new uh, calibrated uh, models uh, against uh, the model three uh, performs better in terms of uh, uh, maximum uh, likelihood. And uh, um, uh, in general, uh, we may uh, compute uh, uh, several classical information criteria in order to rank uh, the proposed models, and we see that uh, based on a Kaike information criteria and Bayesian information criteria, a with correction, um, the models are clearly, uh, say, um, uh, ranked. Um, so uh, uh, we um, uh, do a good, uh, we obtain good results in favor of Bilbao standards uh, distribution. Good. Um, let's. Uh, now observe something. Um, uh, the, the, I mentioned that the experiments uh, are of two kinds. There are two kinds of loadings. So when uh, capital R is less than zero, capital R is greater than zero. And uh, so we may fit again the six models uh, to this uh, uh, case. And uh, um, we, 
if we, we take a, a moment, uh, we may observe uh, that uh, the parameters Q, here is always greater than one, and here is around 0, 0.5, 0, 0.6. So it is related to, to the sign of the cycle ratio R. This is the first observation. And um, here we uh, are keeping uh, the previous uh, um, six models. Uh, indeed, I, I fit only model one and three here, so two types, because model two is less as less performance. So we discard from now on. Uh, and um, uh, also you may see how the scale of A3 is different when uh, you consider only experiments um, say with capital R less than zero or greater than zero. Okay, so this is, will be an information that uh, we may now use uh, we did, uh, um, say, an intermediate um, attempt uh, in order uh, to change the notion of equivalent stress from the previous definition, the so-called uh, Walker's model definition, to this other one. So we recalibrate all the, in this case, uh, four uh, uh, models with, again, the same data. And uh, you see the, the main change has been to divide it by two, one minus R, and at the exponent, instead of Q, writing one plus Q. Okay. At the, this was simply an intermediate stage. But what uh, we achieved, we achieved now that uh, A3, you see, has the same scale uh, without uh, regarding the sign of R. However, Still, uh, uh, Q, uh, the, the sign of Q now is strictly related to the sign of R. So it's, it is positive when R is negative, it is negative when R is positive. Okay, so uh, um, after uh, this, uh, uh, say, intermediate study, uh, we um, propose now uh, for this kind of data with uh, two clear uh, different kind of loadings. Uh, we propose this uh, equivalent stress. So the, the, the only change with respect to the previous uh, expression is that now at the exponent, we have one minus the sine of R times Q. And we calibrate again uh, the, the models using uh, all the data. And uh, uh, we uh, dramatically, say, improve uh, the fit of the model. So, uh, this uh, uh, is, uh, uh, say, a new finding uh, by even modifying the definition of the, of the equivalent stress. And uh, so there are two, two things together, the, the use of the Birbaum saunders distribution and um, uh, the proposal of the new equivalent stress. Good. Um, so then I uh, simply... Uh, depicted here the uh, fitting, and uh, all the fitting now are with this new definition of the uh, equivalent stress. So, uh, as usual for the models uh, with uh, no constant variance, uh, the uh, quantile uh, 0.05 approach faster the uh, horizontal axis. So, these are the fitting, and here uh, you uh, also may look at the um, profile likelihoods for the fatigue like limit parameter. Okay, uh, you see that uh, the, um, the profile likelihood uh, for the Bitbaum Sounder space is again higher mode and lower variability with respect to the normal distribution case. Okay. Uh, instead, there are uh, not much changes, at least we do not observe uh, uh, relevant changes. They are very similar, the profile likelihood in the case of the normal and Bilbao standard distribution with non-constant standard deviation and shape uh, parameters. 
So it, it seems that the message here is that if you use the log normal distribution in a model where the uh, standard deviation also depends on the equivalent stress in the way I showed you, it's also a good model. Uh, then uh, we are able uh, for any of the fitted model uh, to uh, produce the survival functions uh, for uh, any uh, combination of uh, maximum stress and the cycle ratio. Okay, so here uh, you may uh, see, uh, so these uh, red cards, with red circles, you may see uh, which corresponds to the um, Bilbao Sounders uh, model, uh, but with constant shape parameter, it outperforms uh, the corresponding normal model uh, because it has a higher survival probability uh, before the observed failure. So this is uh, uh, the number of cycle when the specimen truly fail and it is uh, the survival probability uh, smaller uh, than the uh, and that of the normal distribution after, say, uh, the observed failure. This is a good behavior that uh, um, it is more or less, um, uh, it appears also for other combinations of the maximum stress and uh, uh, the um, stress ratio R. Okay, so there are simply several cases that uh, we um, uh, May, so we may do this for every kind of uh, specimen uh, uh, pertaining to data set one. And uh, yes, I still have a, a few time to present the other uh, results. Indeed, in the paper, uh, we have uh, a third relevant example where uh, we use also a very important uh, data set uh, very often used in uh, literature and we improved the results of the literature. And uh, in particular, uh, we uh, received an email from uh, Professor William Meeker, who uh, asked us if it was possible to um, uh, share these data, which are still not so uh, spread into the, into the literature. So uh, in particular, uh, these uh, um, experiments are much more complex than the previous ones, because uh, uh, here uh, we have uh, um, rotated bending fatigue tests uh, that are conducted on uh, uh, round bar specimens. And in total, there, uh, uh, there, are, there are available 101 records of unnotched uh, specimens. And um, used, uh, there were used uh, five different uh, uh, rotating being fatigue test machines. Okay, so initially um, the specimens were available in the form of a three inch diameter round bars, but then uh, the uh, true, uh, say, specimens that were used in the experiments were extruded from this three inch round bar in, in this way. So, uh, for instance, uh, the one eight inch diameter specimens were obtained by this, uh, say, section of the initial specimen and so forth. The uh, one four diameter specimen extruded from this other part. And so in, uh, we have uh, in total uh, five different um, kind of specimens according to the uh, diameter. And uh, uh, so the fatigue test machine, uh, they um, worked uh, uh, a different test machine for a different uh, diameter specimens. So you may find uh, details uh, regarding uh, uh, these round bar specimens uh, for the unnotched case. Uh, the technical report is much wider and it contains also notched uh, specimens. And indeed, a finding of the authors was that a, a truly um, careful in, in polishing first uh, this specimen is essential in order to provide uh, meaningful experiments. So there is all a discussion regarding the technique in order to polish the surface of these, uh, of these specimens. Quite interesting. 
And uh, okay, so th th there are different uh, um, features for the fatigue testing machine. Here there is uh, the Battel machine that was used for the half inch diameter specimen, but uh, there are the other four. This is, for instance, the Baldwin Southward fatigue testing machine used for testing one inch diameter. So, and um, okay, so we have this uh, 101 round bar uh, specimen with five different uh, uh, kind of uh, values of, the, of diameter. In this case, the stress ratio is set to one. So uh, this means the capital R is equal to minus one. And uh, therefore, uh, we have fully reverse condition. And therefore, the equivalent stress is simply equal to the maximum stress. Okay, but still, the uh, formulation that we, we propose, it may be used also in the case of one kind of loading. So there is uh, no need to change the, the code. Uh, okay, simply assign the value. And uh, um, 13 out of the 101 experiments uh, were classified as runouts. So here the data as this structure, we have uh, in total uh, 35 uh, uh, experiments uh, performed uh, upon uh, one eight uh, inch diameter specimen and, and so forth. So the number is quite small uh, for uh, some uh, um, minimum section diameter. So uh, we did the following, we fit uh, first only for uh, what we call the specimen one, one eight uh, inch diameter, specimen two, only one four inch diameter, okay? And then we also fitted the models for the pooled data sets. Okay, so th these are, for instance, the data uh, for the last, uh, for the smaller values of inch diameter, the true, the true data, okay? And uh, so you see the runouts in, in red, and uh, okay. Uh, so uh, with the different, uh, I mean, uh, uh, inch diameter, you may appreciate, uh, for instance, the same sometimes uh, values of the maximum stress, okay? 40, 40, 40, okay. So it's a combination. Uh, we, we use this information later. And here is the um, maximum likelihood estimates for the models of kind one and three. So log normal distribution and uh, um, when the logarithm base 10 of the fatigue life is modeled as a disbound standard distribution. And um, well, you may appreciate um, again in general uh, the um, better performance uh, when uh, we use a bit bound standards uh, distribution. Uh, good. Um, so here uh, you see the fit has been done separately with the four models for specimen one, the four models for specimen two only, and then, as I told you, the pooled uh, uh, data sets. And uh, yes, uh, you may see immediately here uh, how uh, it becomes worse to the fitting uh, when we put uh, different things together in some sense. Okay, but uh, still uh, in, in every case, uh, we may appreciate uh, the improvement, sometimes slight, when uh, the uh, standard deviation and the shape parameter are non-constant, but there is always an improvement in terms of the bit bomb sounders distribution. And then uh, uh, here are the corresponding uh, uh, fittings uh, with uh, these uh, five different uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, specimen according to their uh, inch diameter and uh, the runouts mostly located as it is expected at the end and for low level of stress. So when the stress is low, we expect that the specimen will survive to a much longer number of much greater number of uh, cycles. Good. Uh, then we did uh, mostly the same. Uh, by uh, comparing the profile likelihood for the fatigue life parameters. And um, again, in the case when the um, uh, 
shape parameter and the standard deviation are constant. Uh, there is a shift in the mode uh, when we use the big bound summary distribution and a lower, a lower variance. Uh, things are pretty similar as before when we uh, move to non-constant uh, standard deviation and non-constant shape parameter. Then um, here we used um, in order to um, robustify say, our uh, analysis for the pool the maximum likelihood estimates, uh, we use the stratified uh, bootstrapping, uh, well, according uh, to the value of the stress ratio as usual. And we find that in general, the 90% the confidence interval are tighter for the Bilbaum Sander distribution models. And um, uh, similar uh, study uh, for the uh, survival functions. In uh, this case, uh, uh, I plotted the four uh, specimens uh, that um, have been submitted to a maximum stress of uh, 50. Okay, and the next uh, plot are the survival function uh, for the 13 specimens when we used uh, the maximum stress equal 40. Okay, so these are the vertical bars when uh, the number of cycles when uh, truly occurred the failure and uh, the overlap of the corresponding survival function. Um, okay. This um, uh, for the other two cases. Uh, yeah. Pretty similar the behavior that I already described. And um, uh, in conclusion, uh, so uh, we use the, um, you see all the time, this parameter A3, and so, uh, these are called uh, in the literature fatigue limit models, uh, but of varying the complexity, uh, especially designed to take into account uh, the uh, right sensory observation. They are called runouts. And um, in the data set one, uh, we considered uh, two types of, uh, of loadings. Uh, as I mentioned, the tension tension when capital R is uh, greater than zero and tension compression where capital R is less than zero. And so um, we also introduce a new equivalent stress uh, and the combination of this uh, idea improved uh, the fit uh, for uh, um, data set one. Uh, okay. Is, uh, there are other conclusions regarding uh, data sets two. Let's see. So uh, we have five types of round bar specimen, as uh, you have seen, and uh, we have performed also pulled, uh, uh, say, calibration for the for the entire data sets, but the variability increased considerably uh, by pulling together specimens with uh, so different characteristics. And uh, anyway. Um, uh, we used uh, in this uh, very classical statistical approach uh, information criteria that showed that in general, the big bump standard distribution models provide a better fit and higher uh, confidence in estimating uh, uh, the fatigue limit parameters, mostly in uh, um, the um, models uh, with uh, uh, constant shape parameter. And uh, uh, Yes, in general, uh, the, this is a finding, the big bounce under distribution when coupled with these uh, fatigue limit models uh, improved the performance of traditional models. So we believe that uh, this contribution may call the attention of the practitioner uh, of uh, fatigue uh, of fatigue data. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Marco. Any questions or comments? The cube. <laughs> okay. Oh. Very good. Wow. Sure. Test, test. Can you hear? Okay. Just curious. I see you invested a lot of energy in this project. 
how easy it is to generalize to other applications. For example, one of application was uh, engines in big ships, but assume that I produce bicycles. Yes, every bicycle costs, let's say, 400 euro, but I produce millions of them and they are from metal and I need to be tested. Can I extend something from this project or not? Yes, indeed, um, I only uh, told that uh, we also use the, uh, these models with other kind of material. So for instance, for carbon and uh, the performance uh, with this kind of models, uh, they are better than the one previously obtained into the literature. Uh, this is a really very famous uh, data set of laminate panel data carbon. Uh, so uh, these models, they are not restricted uh, to the kind of material. But um, they are quite flexible. It depends the way um, the, ex the fatigue experiments have been performed. So we have suggested that we may even improve the notion of equivalent stress, which means that uh, we have all, uh, um, say, uh, a framework indeed with many models that we may fit. And uh, we may vary a lot among models and among also the say, most engineering parts, which is the notion of equivalent stress that needs to be used, uh, yeah, right? When, when you obtain uh, specimens from uh, different uh, uh, stress conditions. So, so the answer is yes. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Well, if not, let's thank Marco and Nadir for nice talks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so on the program, I see there's a coffee now for half an hour, and then the conference program resumes on Sunday morning, right? Aha, uh -huh, yes, okay, but maybe you should, you want to say something about that? I am coming, yes. <laughs> So, AJ, do you remember something? I don't actually. Hmm? Yes, yes, yes. There's a walk through Albalad, which is extremely nice. If you have not done it, you should do it. And if you have done it, you should do it too. It's great. And then we go to a very fine place called the Park Hyatt Hotel for dinner. And that will be also very nice. If you have done it, you should do it again too. And you know it, that it's very good. But at what time is the pickup? Does it say in the, okay. So for those that, yeah. okay. Cool, okay, so, hola. Thank you very much. Let's, uh, let's go for the coffee break. Thank you.